live? I would think so. Hey, I just got a. I just got a Discord. The Discord one. Just got a Discord. I haven't gotten that yet. Very good. I'm waiting for Twitch to pop up. What did it just do? Okay, it says we're live. We are live. Are we? Yep. Right, I see us on. on Facebook. We are live. All right, we are actually live on uh, Twitch too. It hasn't given me a notification yet. Okay, but we are somehow. No. Uh, Oh, latency's not too bad, actually. This time. Latency looks great. I, I like this. I mean, yeah, compared to you know, like last time where we're all choppy and yeah, not having fun. Now, yeah, so I don't know about YouTube, fun. but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll let it go. We'll yeah. get it in there somewhere. All right. So now we're live. So we're testing out some new technology. So um, our last stream was a little choppy. So we decided to rehash some stuff and try something new. So you should be able to follow us on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. Yeah. All right. So we should introduce ourselves. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. That's always a great idea. Charlie, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. All right. I'm Charlie, the Guiding Ohio Online Learning Coach here at the Public Library, and sitting to my right. Hey, I'm on the right. Yeah. It's on your left, stage left. <laughs> uh, I'm Sean, Emerging Services and Technologies Librarian for here for the Madison Public Library. Hey, someone already said hi in the chat. Hi. Hello, Hello Sarah. So, hi, Sarah. Anytime. Oh, we forgot to introduce Colt. Oh, uh, yeah. We should introduce Colt on, since Colt, he has a mic. Introduction. introduce yourself, Colt. Hi, my name's Colt, and I'm the uh, disembodied head uh, speaking into your ear. And Colt is one of our pages and our digital producer tonight. So Colt does most of our video work in the, uh, back in the scenes. So that's what's going on there. So, uh, you know, this isn't just uh, us uh, talking. You can ask us questions. We've got the chat open. We've got it rigged up so that Charlie and I can see the chat right in front of us. And Cold is also manning the keyboard at his end. So feel free to chat with us there. So um, since, uh, since, yeah, it looks like, so Sarah's watching. Yes. So hopefully if, and Josh is watching. So if someone can let us know that, uh, you know, we sound pretty good at their end, that'd be great. Uh, since we're testing out some yeah, new technology, let's, let's, let's make sure that we can actually be heard. <laughs> yeah, and not yeah. we're we're yeah. just not sitting here, like yeah, aimlessly talking and well, we aimlessly talk <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's true. But, All right, but we're gonna talk about some technology no stuff nice. and let's get rolling and see if anybody says something. I just got a a, a thumbs up, so that's good. So maybe right, someone's so listening to us. So I think we're I think we're getting a good old thumbs up saying that we're good. We're to good go to go. On, Move uh, on, audio. guys. So All right. we're gonna start off with some. Uh, uh, more robot-ish things. Well, that's totally down with us. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sarah, for saying looking good and sounding good. All right. That's always we great. always look good, right, Charlie? <laughs> yeah. Depends on the day with me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so segue. So you know, like the the the, the yeah, segue lean scooter forward and backward. Yeah. And that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, is making a robot that can mow your grass. So okay. It's kind of like the Roomba of grass. Okay. But it actually mows your grass. Doesn't you know vacuum up your grass. No, so it's just yeah. gonna. It's just gonna be like when I mow. I yeah, back most of the time yeah. either. Yeah. So well, it's it's supposed to bag it too. Okay. But it's supposed to be like a Roomba where you have to like take the cartridge off. So what's the it. point of a robot vacuum if I've got to go bag it every <laughs> every ten feet? I don't know, but it uses it doesn't. It's not like a Roomba where it actually just it tracks itself. Like it takes uh -huh. a while to calibrate itself. Mm -hmm. It uses GPS. Okay. To actually figure out like. Where you want it to be? Because so I was like, kind of wondering if I had to install barrier. like wires in my yard, no. so basically, like an invisible dog yeah. fence to keep, you won't, to keep yeah. the robot. It even in. says right here. So unlike other robot mowers, you don't uh -huh. have to install a boundary wire to keep uh -huh. the robot in the right patch of grass. You just it you set the boundaries on an app probably, or okay. you set it on like yeah, define the boundaries of an area to be mowed for its smartphone app. Okay. So it's just you set the boundary there. Okay. And then it just goes off of the, the GPS as long so as it's actually kind of cool yeah. because, like, theoretically, you know, I could be mowing my lawn and say, like, you know, my neighbor is sick or something like mm -hmm. that. I could have, I could extend out my boundaries and just have it mow my neighbor's lawn. That, or you just set it over in his lawn and, and then you set, set a boundary and then I, I could do send that, it back yeah. and forth. Yeah. Not that my neighbor's sick. My, oh, yeah, my neighbor's but, wild, you know, but, but, yeah, it, it's that's still a nice cool. idea. Yeah, it has like three different models that like go uh -huh. up in size. Well, of course. I, I mean, obviously, the biggest amount of square feet uh, here that I can see is thirty-three thousand square feet of uh, yard. Thirty-three thousand square feet. I so wonder how it big says that like is. Three thousand square meters is what 3, it says. Three thousand square meters. I'm trying to figure out because I know, 
I'd have to quickly figure out uh, meters versus acres, you know. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know exactly how. Yeah. The the conversions work because. Yeah, because I, I I sit on like three four acres, mm -hmm. you know, the house kind of in the middle. So um, that'd be interesting to see. Yeah, you know. I think I mean maybe second. I wonder what it does out later, like with yeah. like industrial ones that are like twice the size. Yeah, <laughs> and they have like this huge radius kind of thing. Yeah, I mean I, I could see. Kind of cool. yeah, because, yeah, I could see this being very cool. I could see this being a neat technology. Well, I think we talked about it before. Um, thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Melanie. It's it's our <laughs> new experiment. Uh, I think we talked about this before. ODOT has a robot mower, but yeah. it's um, it's so it's joystick controlled, mm -hmm. um, and it's a great kind of uh, it's a great tool for mowing all of the embankments for um, the overpasses. And so when I'm driving up Interstate 11 or I'm on 90, um, I often see uh, a, a gentleman or a lady from yeah. ODOT with the uh, you know like you're flying a yeah. mower airplane, but it's the mower going up and it's down. Just, and it's got treads. It's just a just a it's a it's basically yeah. just an RC tank. It's with, an RC with tank blades. with a blade on it. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of awesome, and it's pretty big. I would say it's about as big as the table we're sitting at. Oh, okay. Because um, when I've driven by when they're unloading it, because they unload thought, it off. I of thought it was just going to be like they just took like the saw or the the. The mower deck off a mower and just was like no okay, no it kind of no it. it's it's its own or motor on it it's um it, in all honesty it's probably about as long as this table so this table's probably about four foot five foot long yeah and probably about as wide so three four foot wide um and then the mower deck is underneath that and it's it but it's kind of it's it's underneath but it doesn't go out yeah it's like it's it's vertical. Okay. So and it doesn't have like a split to where like if it goes up one side, it doesn't just no, take it's, it up it's, with it. No, because it's since it's so compact. Oh, okay. So it's 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 vertical. So it's from front to back and says side to side mm -hmm. so that the treads it doesn't go mess with the treads. Oh, so you've okay. got the tank treads on the side. So it just rolls up. I've watched up, I've watched the person pilot, down. it just rolls yeah. up and then you know I've seen them turn and then roll back yeah. down. It's it is it okay. is really cool to watch. Because there's some crazy valleys in that ninety eleven interchange. That I think it would be utterly terrifying. Well, yeah, because you're right on to, the border to ride in a regular mower. Well, I mean, you're going from like literally you're on the border of PA on 11. Yeah, and that 90 inter that 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 interchange there just yeah, it's like absolutely. Uh, uh, a couple of those are just frightening. Yeah, we we're getting all kinds of things. So yeah, so all right. That's that's one thing that I have here on the, well, that's the cool. list of I love things. I love that I love that kind of technology. Um, I always wanted to have a fleet of Roombas. <laughs> to go out, uh, not that I don't want you know to take someone's job for cleaning the building, but it'd be kind of nice to like have a fleet of Roombas go out yeah. at the end of the day and just kind of spot clean some stuff and then come back and then you know have have the regular cleaners yeah. do more interesting work, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, clean you know you know clean surfaces oh, and things like it. that. I know there's another one along the lines of like the the Roombas. Oh like yeah, they, they made a newer model that's supposed to not do something, but I can't oh, yeah? remember where I found it. Well, my here it is. Yeah. It, what is it? It's AI to avoid dog poop. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, what they, they would call the, the what was it, poop catastrophes or something yeah, like that? Yeah, catastrophes. Yeah. yeah. They, they're, Roomba's now making the newer models, or maybe it's just an update to more Roomba's or iRobot stuff anyway. Uh -huh. But they're incorporating AI so that yeah. it avoids it so it doesn't just drag I've, it across. I, yeah, I've read a horrible stories where the, the Roomba has drug it across the house. Yeah, it sounds, sounds horrendous. So yeah, let's segue out of that one. Segue. Yeah, exactly. See, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, terrible joke. There you go. I'm good for those. Um, so uh, this morning I was reading an article, and um, you know, I, I think a lot of people know that I write I write code. I've written code for for most of my life, and um, I've studied a different a, a, a pretty yeah. large amount of languages, and one of those was COBOL. And you know, at the time, COBOL was antiquated when I studied it, but yet it was prior to the Y2K thing. Mm -hmm. And everybody who had COBOL needed to rewrite their code to handle a four-digit year. And so it was a good deal to study at that time. Um, so recently, as of this morning, I was reading something from this. Um, it's, a, it's a Wall Street kind of business watch kind of thing. Um, and they were talking about COBOL is still in use. 95% mm -hmm. of the transactions from bank to bank and 96% of all of your ATM transactions, whether it's at a pin pad. Patients, oh, the public library our, computers are going to shut down in five minutes. Please save your work and exit your program. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Um, that's our automated uh, uh, overhead speakers, um, voiced by our friend Margaret, who does um, Good Morning Madison periodically. 
Uh, so getting back to where I was, yeah. so um, yeah, so ninety six percent of your ATM. So whether you're at a Target or a gas station and you're doing your purchase there, mm -hmm. at some point interacts with Cobalt code. So Cobalt was uh, it was basically kind of crafted in nineteen sixty nine. So I studied it like twenty four years ago at this point, twenty three years ago, yeah. somewhere in that range. Um, so some. So right now, and this is also what kind of affected um, a lot of the states uh, for their unemployment benefits, because all of the systems in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, New York, all ran on COBOL. And they didn't have, part of the reason why some of this had some issues um, is that, um, yes, Melanie said, Margaret leads Yarn and Yak. Yes, she does, Yarn and Yak as well. Um, sorry, I forgot about that. A little distracted there. Look, a squirrel. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, they they the the reason why some of the stuff was you, we were having trouble getting these unemployment things going through yeah. is they didn't have enough COBOL programmers to write more code because it's it's a dying art. Yeah, you know, um, there are days I feel like myself and some of my classmates from Youngstown, um, you <laughs> we're know, like the last class. we're the last bastions of it. Um, it was a couple of years after us they were still teaching yeah. the class. I don't know if they still teach it now. I had to look. But it did. It feel like it felt like myself and my friend Jeff and some of us, some of us were like the last COBOL coders, you know, being cranked out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So um, so New York Mellon Bank, okay. A uh, hundred and eleven, a hundred and twelve thousand five hundred individual COBOL programs make up their banking infrastructure. A hmm. hundred and eleven, a hundred and twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, Very impressive. Yeah. So basically, at this point, 240 billion lines of COBOL code make up our banking infrastructure. Now, now I know you bring this up because it came. It, it, it was a, you know, it was coding that was made around, you know, very late 60s, very yeah, early, early 70s, 70s. Yeah. Is there is there a reason why should we be like concerned about this? I think the the, the concern right now is the fact that we're not making new COBOL coders. And the funny thing is, it's not a bad language. It's a little verbose. It's literally like typing out, um, you know, a, a novel, as I used to yeah. joke, because it's it's literally you write f full words and things like that. Um, but I think the problem is that yeah, we have this entire our entire banking infrastructure is built on a language that we're not making new people for. So it's the same brain drain that you see in industry. So like people, you know, engineers for companies that know how to run certain machines or machinists yeah. that these these folks are retiring. And we're not producing new machinists. Mm -hmm. We're not producing new COBOL coders. And the funny thing is, COBOL is is really robust. It it processes math super fast. That's what it's good at. Just like um, the supercomputers, like the Cray supercomputer yeah. at Ohio State, runs on Fortran. Fortran's just as old of a language. <laughs> That's how we predict hurricanes. Oh. Is with a language that was written in the early seventies. Yeah. All right. Maybe I should yeah. not underestimate some. Older Don't stuff. underestimate those old languages. Some of them are pretty. Right. Some of them are cool. I will say Fortran is is a nightmare. <laughs> I, it was not my favorite language by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. Um, so I think we'll get off the old old timey Cody thing, old timey code. Well, I mean, I can still go back to <laughs> old timey things. Um, conveniently, <laughs> let's go on to uh, Nintendo being Nintendo and re-releasing uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games onto Switch. So uh, yeah, the Game Boy came out when I was a kid. So yeah, old timey. Yeah, about yeah, but so. Uh, so, like on the Nintendo Switch, you can have you have uh, NES and SNES uh, games uh -huh. you can play on there. Yeah. Now they're just going to add on to that with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color stuff. So no no say on like what some of the games will be. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to be mainly more straight line Nintendo. I was going to say mo most stuff. of the time they start out with the, not like the straight the, up Nintendo, yeah, the Mario like, stuff. Like I'm not going to expect like some version of like a Disney game. From the Game Boy that come out, probably very some of those licensed properties that license there, have expired really weird years ago, licenses yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so supposedly they're gonna like, um, oh, they're saying possibly like Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, Super Mario RPG. Super Mario RPG was a really cool game. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very cool. It was a it was a very different kind of departure for where the Mario franchise was, it was kind of neat. It was big and like, it was huge like in Japan. These, these were these are just like their N NES and SNES stuff. Yeah. Like, you, I mean, people really don't know what Earthbound is. Again, but, that one was again, huge. Exactly. Unless you're like yeah, a exactly. gaming nerd like you and I are yeah. and, and, and Colt, 
you know, um, <laughs> that one just truly isn't. Uh, that one did not. Yeah. That was not a mainstream. They didn't make. Oh, no. They didn't make a cartoon on Saturday for that one. No, 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 no. no. It was a cool but, game. You though. know, like you know, like Sonic, Kirby, Mario. They all did. They all got cart. They, they, all, had they had all got cartoons. They all got cartoons. Um, uh, Zelda. So yeah, Lincoln Zelda. Zelda got cartoon. Um, Kid Icarus and Castlevania. So Simon. Yeah, Dumont. I was gonna say. Ca- yeah, I was about that, to say Castlevania, but I was like. Mm-hmm. I know that they re- they they did one on Amazon or not Amazon. Netflix. They did more of an anime version, but there was yeah. a there was a but straight was, up was Sunday Saturday morning like, cartoon. Yeah. I couldn't because I thought there was. But yeah, I, straight up Saturday morning cartoon. Exactly. Cartoon. All right, there we go. Okay, so um, what was it last? It was the last time or the time before that we were talking about Windows Eleven. Yeah, was the time before that. The, the last was, time I think we it kind of we kind of had like yeah multiple instances. Okay, so if you're not aware, um, in the next month or two, uh, Windows Eleven is um, on its way out and available. Um, the interesting thing is that Windows 11 has some pretty specific hardware requirements. It's not really um, processor or memory. There's some of that, but it's security. So it's this um, TPM chip, which sounds like something from Office Space, like TPS reports. But this TPM chip, which is in most modern computers, um, you know, it's a security chip. It's, uh, Windows 11 requires that. Mm-hmm. And it requires a certain version of it. So our friends at Asus. Yeah. They're actually writing the BIOS on their motherboards, okay? Yeah. To get around that. Really? Really. Yes. They're basically right. writing a way around some of the Microsoft hardware requirements. <laughs> um, so that's good and bad because I am all for some hardware security because we've had some really bad hardware vulnerabilities lately where you can take out a PC remotely yeah. by the hardware, not by the software, but interacting with the hardware. So I'm kind of like, okay, that's terrible. But then I'm on the other side of the fence going, you know, if I was well, a business and I just bought yeah. 400 PCs just to find out that they won't work, they won't work with windows yeah. 11. Um, and so, you well, know, in I'm 2024, is- I'm going to have to exactly. roll them out. To- yeah. I would lose my mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, especially like it's like people that bought like these laptops like a few years ago. Mm-hmm. A lot of those aren't being supported because they don't. The, yeah. Those chips or boards and all that kind of stuff don't support that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I know yours. Yours does because we've my, tested it on Windows 11s on yeah, yours. Well, yeah. I have I have the beta version of 11. Yeah, you're running 11 right, right now. now. Same with my PC at home. Your PC at home. Yeah, I loaded it up on one of my PCs at home. Most of them don't support it because they don't have the right TPM chip. Well, like. Um, the one at home, it's not like I actually plugged in like the TPN chip to the board. Okay. It's just it's within the CPU itself. Oh, okay. So what you have to do is go into the BIOS and turn it on yourself. Unlock it. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And then it just turns it on because it it because I was like, oh, I should support Windows 11 beta at home too. No, because <laughs> because because they have like the health the PC health checkup tool. Yeah. To see if your computer can compatible do it. Yeah. and stuff, and it was like. Your PC's not compatible. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And then I went into the BIOS and turned it on. I'm like, oh, now it is. Now it is, yeah. Of course it is. So, uh, well, so <laughs> we'll take a brief. If you have any questions out there and anybody watching on uh, Twitch and or um, uh, Facebook or YouTube, feel free to type in some questions. Uh, Colts is manning the, <clears throat> manning the chat window there to check out things. And... Uh, so we'll also be able to see, one of the things I turned on is the chat on the side of our screen. So you, sh- you can actually see the chat live. Um, so anybody out there in the universe, I'd love to see you, hear you. Uh, so we'll go from there. All right. So let's see. I'm going to jump onto another news thing while we're waiting, see if anybody will ask All us some right, questions. Go ahead. So are you ready for this one? Maybe. TikTok okay. has overtaken YouTube. For the average watch time in the U.S. and United Kingdom, you know, I'm actually not surprised by that. So, to be completely honest really? with you, no. Yeah. Well, I, I look at it along the lines of like how Instagram put out reels. Yeah. I feel like you could spend countless hours. Oh yeah, I've fallen down that hole just watching reels on reels. Yeah. And it's just kind of like TikTok does the same thing. It's not like YouTube where eventually you run out of things that you don't want to watch anymore. Yeah. Because TikTok kind of works around like mm-hmm. if you like if you like certain things or you... good evening, Madison patrons. The Madison Public Library is going to close in ten minutes. Please make your final selections and bring them to the checkout desk at this time. Pick up all copies and printouts. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Um, but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, like it 
it it's the algorithm of if you like this, yeah. we're gonna make we're gonna push you stuff that you like. Yeah. Compared to YouTube, where it's kind of like it, well, it, kind it depends. Of the same if you're thing. logged in and, into YouTube, yeah. it it does a better job but, than like, if you even, subscribe but to things. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. Oh yeah, like, I've like, done some because, weird like, stuff because like. The like dislike button really doesn't do anything anymore. Not as much. It's no. just mainly viewers by this point. Yeah. No, um, actually, it, it, funny thing is, at our level for YouTube, because mm -hmm. we're not like the billions of subscribers. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, we're in the hundreds or a hundred. Um, <laughs> so please, please like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, now, in all honesty, the likes mean something to us. But like when you're one of those big yeah. uh, YouTube people, um, like I can think of like. Um, uh, one of the things I watch is All Things Barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just I'm a food guy. Yeah. Um, they that they have you know you know hundreds of thousands of yeah. subscribers, well, I mean, and the likes don't mean as much. Oh to yeah. Them. Well, the I, mean, I, I watch do. like I watch like a guy that that makes like sausages out of like anything. I love watching. His, that. his name is Ordinary Sausage or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And he just like all like that doesn't matter to him like the likes and stuff. Like yeah, he says please you know like and subscribe because like yeah. yeah, that's what we do on yeah. all our videos too. But here. like that's what he does. But he doesn't really care much about that. He cares more about subscribers than yeah. he does. Subscribers know, mean the most stuff. probably. Oh exactly, they always do. Okay, what do you got coming up next? Um, I think I'm gonna skip that one for right now. Okay, but let's let's do. Let's do a car. Let's okay, car we always do cars. Company. So Toyota, the car company, yeah, uh, is actually going to try and invest to thirteen point six billion dollars in car batteries. Billion will be the next huh? decade. So we're talking EV batteries, right? Yes, because they're they're starting to come out with more and more EVs. Yeah, um, I noticed how we've 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 be. now adjusted from electronic vehicle to just EV. Yeah, which makes me think of Pokemon, but that's another story. Entirely. Well, I mean, yeah, eventually, yeah. like every stream, we'll have to explain what it actually means. Yeah, but yeah, so Toyota says they're going to start investing in more batteries, along the lines of like capabilities, uh, maybe making range, range, a lot range would be more important. Yeah. Um, but they're talking about how they're going to, you know, up battery production by twenty twenty five. Yeah, like they're they're wanting to get more. Like they're making battery factories just for this. Yeah. Well, I mean, they put they put like a couple of battery factories um, outside of Youngstown and Lordstown where the GM plant was. Yeah. There's like two battery factories there now for GM. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of fascinating. Yeah. And you know, the last 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 month we talked about the company that where you um, you know, it's kind of like changing the battery in your drill. Yeah. You park your car over. Yeah. It drops it the battery, it. swaps in another one, and you pull yeah. out and you go. Um, so I'm seeing, you know, more and more of that kind of stuff. And yeah, range is a big deal. Um, yeah. Cause like a, te what, a Tesla can get like 300 miles. Yeah. I think they're at three something. About now. so. And yeah. then like, even like the Mach E only gets about three, four yeah. at most. Yeah. I mean, you know, you'd have to, I think, I think I saw a map where you had to kind of plan out your, your yeah, Tesla you, you trip. You have to plan you know, out your to, trip. To know where you're going to go. Like compared to like a, a gasoline powered car to where, oh, there's a gas station right here. I can stop right now. Yeah. With an EV or like an electric vehicle like that, you have to find an EV station or you have to find like a Tesla dealership. Yeah. Or you have to find like some place that actually has these chargers. Yeah. Because if you then you gotta out, sit there for a while. Exactly. You got to wait for it to charge, which doesn't I don't think they take that long. Um, depends on what kind of charger it is. Yeah, if it's not like the Tesla supercharger with a Tesla. It, yeah, they have a couple different superchargers because I'm looking into um, viability of us getting a, a supercharger here through a grant. Mm. Um, so the library doesn't pay for the electricity. Um, the consumer, the person charging pays for the electricity. Okay, so it's but we like provide access to kind of the, the thing, yeah. Okay. So it's like a gas pump, uh, but the grant to put in the infrastructure. So we mm. wouldn't have to pay for... The electrical lines run, or the the charging station, oh, okay. or all that stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, Ohio. Um, it's a windfall from the Volkswagen lawsuit, where they were talking. Mm. They 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 misrepresented their efficiency numbers, yeah. and so they the U.S. government sued them. That money was distributed to states, and the states are using it for things like being able to put in EV chargers or other oh, okay. stuff like it. It's really cool. Well, I wish I was looking. Uh, at Stark County like, Library got one. Oh, Sorry, really? interrupt. Yeah, oh, Stark County Library just but, got one. Uh, I know uh, there was. They were talking about the. The microbus from Volkswagen. Yeah, they're coming out with an electric version of that, yeah. and also doing like the same thing uh, with like the autonomous cars mm -hmm. or autonomous cars, however you do it, however you say it. Autonomous. Yeah, autonomous. Um, they're doing basically like the taxis yeah. kind of thing, and Intel is also working on these. You want to segue into that? Yeah, might as well just another segue, segue without that. segue. Yeah, segues the segues. Yeah. Um, so Intel. Uh, is a little is like a little partner company that they bought called Mobileye. Yeah, 
Um, they're launching a robo taxi service in Germany okay. in 2022. Which, yeah, I know it's not the U.S. It's fine. It will eventually make it here. They're doing some stuff in Austin right now. Yeah, are they? Yeah, with mobile. Yeah, oh. Oh, mobile maybe, delivery and mobile taxi. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It was, but it's not um, Intel. I, I think yeah. it's. I think it's uh, the Google mobile stuff. Oh, the Google. Mobile. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard about that. Yeah, the autonomous Google stuff. Yeah, but basically, it's supposed to be this like, it's supposed to track where it's coming from. It's like supposed to update every. Like all the time. So I think I'd be like fascinated road with and all this kind of stuff. You know, if you look, if you look at the U.S., our our roads are pretty standardized. But if you if you go to Europe, I mean, some of those roads were you know um, cobblestone paths, um, you know, um, horse tracks, Roman roads, and some of them are crazy. Like I can remember the initial GPS stuff over in Europe. Um, box trucks would get stuck. Because the roads weren't wide enough, and they literally would wedge into two buildings, two houses, or whatever. Oh, these are vision-based so, autonomous vehicles. So let's see. Uh, so let's see. So like phone cameras. Morgan just joined us on Twitch. So hey, nice to nice to fit, drop in a question at any time. I think you're you're our lone Twitch person. Everybody else is on Facebook right yeah, now. So, so far, I appreciate we only it. have Facebook viewers. Yeah. So and YouTube is weird because there is a comment section in YouTube, but I've never unlocked it. But yet we can see it and we can interact with it. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. So these. So actually, the the mobile eye one is actually more a vision based. Uh huh. So more like cameras working. So like what Tesla does with their um a their lot of a lot of, of the censored yeah. cars that so tell it's you to more, stay it's in your more lane. like a yeah. sensor kind mm -hmm. of one, but it's supposed to be updated like every so once in a while. So. Morgan says yep. All right, so well, that's I think that's, I think that's very cool. That's very cool. I, I, I definitely will see. A, uh, we'll probably see a lot more stuff start starting to come up, like more towards Cleveland. Yeah, maybe more Columbus. Cincinnati. It's gonna it's gonna be the big. It's you know, gonna be the big cities. Big cities will get those. Um, I think we'll see that more come out soon. But mm -hmm. for but for how far, like Google would have to take it all the way out here. I mean, they were taking it to Austin, Texas. But, yeah, you know, at the same time. Yeah, not, not in the, the cornfields. Corn <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not no. In um, the corn yeah, I think they're gonna do. It's gonna be your big, your big yeah. seven cities in Ohio, as far as things go. Um, you know, but it, it it's it's fascinating. I think you know, I these autonomous vehicles have have their place. I mean, you know, I grew up watching you know shows like or movies like um, uh, Blade Runner, mm -hmm. where you know there was a lot of autonomous kind of vehicles and things, and you know, I I've been waiting for those for years. Um, you know, and it, I, I think it makes some sense. Um, you know, there's something to be said about not having to have a driver, you know, and uh, to make, you know, to make split second decisions because yeah. it knows that, you know, this intersection is blocked because of a uh, an accident mm -hmm. where Google can kind of do that. I mean, I use the uh, um, the ODOT app yeah. on my phone. And I have my route programmed in, so I get a message immediately if there is a slowdown on 90 or 11 or some of my alternative routes. Yeah. So uh, ODOT is doing yeah. that. I mean, we well, can pull that information from ODOT. Like, and tell I, I didn't know about that. I used to use Waze. Mm -hmm. That was another I one still that like used Waze. to be good. Like, I still like it's Waze. It's good, um, but I mean, I, I use the Master Chief voice. <laughs> I, I don't actually... Hug, I, they, ironically, they, I don't actually use... I, 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 I don't use the, the voice part of Waze very yeah. much. Yeah, so like I, I'll have it plugged into my... In my car, uh -huh. and like I'll go like to like Cedar Point or uh -huh. somewhere down like like Kings Island, like down Cincinnati area, mm -hmm. and just like not knowing how to get through Cleveland very well, not knowing uh -huh. how to get through Columbus and Cincinnati very well. <laughs> it's just like you just hear you just hear Massachusetts voice come over, and it's like now take uh, pull right, and like uh, or like when uh, like there's like a hazard ahead, he's yeah. like. Heads up, it may be a trap, and it's always great. That's funny. That. That's funny. I want to see what Waze does in Pittsburgh. Probably have a, <laughs> probably have a meltdown. Uh, I'm used to driving in Pittsburgh. I grew up driving in Pittsburgh. You know, you can go west to go east, and it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what goes up must come down. Uh -oh. This is the title of the article. Um, so, no, this I'm, is. I'm questioning what that actually means. This is absolutely cool. So, Fujitsu. Okay. okay, they made laptops and hard drives. They've made yeah. TVs. It's a Japanese company. Is Good evening, Madison. Oh, hold the on. The library is now closed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Margaret. you, Margaret. That's her automated uh, PA system. So, um, Fujitsu is partnering with the UK Space Agency. 
Okay. To develop a satellite okay. that uh, takes out space junk. So it's it's like a it's like a robot that just eats the space garbage. Well, it's a robot that say adjusts space okay. junk okay. to fall into the ocean, burn up in the atmosphere or fall into the ocean. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of this whole falling into the ocean thing. Um, but most of the That's time it, it tries to burn I'd it be, up. I'd be a little concerned with uh, like what if what if it accidentally miscalculates the, Oops and drops the, it on yeah, drops it on Madison. Drops it on someone, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. No, so they're they're working on it. They're working well, on yeah, it. Yeah, I, I figured our, that. But I mean we've done this actually before. We've uh, we they don't talk about it much, but um, the Russian Space Agency, um, when we were doing some stuff with um, when we had the space shuttle yeah. fully operational and we were doing stuff there. Um, you know, once again, cornfields. Yeah, we'll <laughs> drop it on some cornfields there, Morgan. Um, it's popcorn <laughs> <laughs> from the fire of Alparaiso, Indiana, uh, <laughs> home of home of Orville Redenbacher. So here, yeah, there's some useless knowledge. There you uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> so now, um, in in the past, we have we have forced space junk out of uh, out of the out of the orbit zone mm -hmm. purposely so that it isn't in the the path of the space station. Um, stuff that got in front of the Telstar satellites, you know, would take out GPS, would take out yeah. satellite TV. We have had missions, unofficial missions that didn't get a lot of press that, you know, the, the space, the space shuttle would kind of get up and use the robotic arm to go, eh, and kind of <laughs> like smack it. smack it out of the way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cat on a ranch I mean, we've had some, yeah, <laughs> yeah, cat, and it's just knock off, <laughs> yeah, knock, knock the stuff out of, out of the space. Yeah. But it's amazing. It's, so I looked at a map, uh, one of those NORAD style yeah. space maps. The amount of junk that we have put up, the Russian Space Agency, the uh, Chinese Space Agency, the uh, Indian all, Space, all space Agency. Agencies. Yeah, it's easier to say that. Just about everybody who goes up to space leaves something up there. Something behind, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing how much they're tracking. Yeah. And, and some of it's the size of a golf ball, which is kind of mind-boggling that they're keeping track of golf balls in space but that golf ball could literally blow through the space station yeah. and 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 you know Destroy do it, you know. horrible things yeah um so this thing literally if they can get it functional would go up and collect nudge whatever get this stuff out of you know kind of yeah. basically it's a garbage scowl for the the you know their space yeah so i thought that was really cool that was really cool yeah now see i don't have anything as cool as that, but if okay. you are a Nintendo enthusiast and a Lego enthusiast, this is probably something that you guys are probably going to be interested in. So, um, you know how Lego's been coming out with the Super Mario Legos? Mm -hmm. with It has, like, the Mario thing? Well, this is not one of those. But if you ever played Mario 64, mm -hmm. um, it is basically... I don't know if Cole can pull up the video or not, but... Um, uh, probably not right now, because we, right we need to learn oh, a little so bit more about... about yeah, okay. this is... New so platform, we'll, I don't break we'll anything. Kinda, we'll, we'll, fall, we'll, we'll hold off on that right now. I don't want to break anything. But, so basically, what's it, what it is, is a... Um, it's, the, it's the typical Mario, like, you know, question mark block. Uh -huh. But it folds out and shows off three um, three or four different stages from the 60, Mario 64 game. Okay. Which is, I think it was, like, Peach's Castle. Oh, that's cool. Um, Bomb on Battlefield... Cool, cool mountain and lethal lava trouble. Nice, and nice. it looks really cool. But I mean, for the for the price, I don't know if I would do it. Actually, it's better than the NES that they came out with like a few years ago. Really? Yeah, um, I haven't paid much attention to any of those Legos. I, I look at them, but yeah. I'm like, I'm not, well, a, I'm not a Lego buyer. I eventually, I, I, I mean, I have a six year old. We're not buying this. Yeah. Well, I I, I, can, I, I go back and forth between the Lego store and Beachwood and come back ah. home. But, you know, occasionally. That's only if I go to the you know, micro center and I'm doing stuff out there. Yes, but this. Like, nerd, I, nerd mecca. Exactly. And I'll go back and forth and just kind of look around at the mm -hmm. Lego store sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, like, 170 bucks for, what is it, 2,000 pieces? Yeah. Something like that, which is... Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, um, my... my my best friend from from high school and and long term friend, um, you know, we've been friends since we we're four. Uh, he's a Lego guy. He yeah, but he does mostly Star Wars Legos. You know, I mean, he, you know, some of those are you know hundreds of thousands yeah. of pieces for like some like, of the big stuff. Well, like, he's I, I look at like I've been in there and they have like the the 
big old like Millennium Falcon. And in he there. has all of those. Yeah, they have like the full size. Like they have like a winning Star game. Destroyer. Yeah, like the Star Destroyer. They yeah. have like a bunch of like these, like the car, like the Technic. Yeah, cars those Technic and, things are nuts and all that kind of stuff. Like they have it all just on display in these cases, mm -hmm. and it's just like, um, cool. Only yeah. if I were a collector. <laughs> Only yeah. When, when we ever were billionaires, you know. Yeah, you, you know, know exactly. I would I would have all the Legos. Uh, all the Legos. Yeah. So hey, Colt. Since the chat shows to everybody, can you throw something into the chat? I threw something into Facebook. Can you throw something into the regular chat that you go out to everybody about? You know, feel free to ask us any questions. Um. So, okay. I've talked about graphene before. So graphene is um, it's it's a form of carbon. So you know how diamonds and graphite yeah. are carbon. Graphene is is it's a type of carbon that people have become really fascinated with lately, um, because it, it forms kind of lattices and networks and stuff. So um, one of the things that um, folks who get like um, say medical implants, so whether it's um, you know an implant for your heart. Or you know a replacement for yeah. like a, a hip or a joint or something like that. Um, one of the one of the things with that is is your body kind of goes after it and yeah. you can get bacterial infections because it's you know you can do your best to keep everything clean, but like bacterial infections and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so graphene, because it's 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 so it's super hard like diamond, but we can we can mold it into stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's porous. And it's porous in a way that it will hold things like antibiotic coating. Okay. So you can put graphene, which makes things super hard, and it's antibiotic. So mostly it's bacteria. It's not really viruses yeah. that affect you. It's bacteria that gets into these, these implants and things. Um, so you can coat the implant, yeah. make it stronger, and make it resistant to bacteria. Do you consider an external charger for your phone or laptop a back-to-school supply? All right, so that's just a question that came in on chat. Um, I actually do. Um, so, we're, you know, we're talking about the, the portable batteries, yeah. I think is what is what Melanie's going after. Um, I do. I do consider them a... a because nowadays, um, you can't always trust power places. Um and we're more of a, especially with COVID, we're more of an outdoor mobile society. And I, I'll tell you what, I'm looking into, you know, like solar chargers you can have kind of in the, we'll call it the library yard yeah. where you, you know, you can charge your phone, charge your laptop on a pillar kind of in the middle yeah. of the yard. Um, this makes it sound like we've got a giant yard, but, <laughs> um, you know, we, we definitely have some entrances and we're near schools. Um, I would absolutely consider an external charger a battery pack of some sort because, it's Heaven always nice knows. to have. You it's know. always nice to have it, like especially when you're like running around like a, a mall and you don't really pay attention to what your phone's at and you're consistently looking at it or you're playing. And it's, I mean, it's but your life you're like the world. Us. You're like us. You play Pokemon Go all the time. Yeah, and yeah. the battery Pokemon just, is, is gone. It's gone. It's gone. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, it's definitely nice to have one like walking around with. Um, yeah, and I can also see, you know, you, the worst thing I, I think anybody can experience, I think it happens to everybody at least once, is you have your laptop out with you. Oh, yeah. You're working on something terribly important, and you realize that the laptop charger at, is plugged in at home yeah. <laughs> on your desk or somewhere like that, or you leave you leave work and you're working out mobile yeah. somewhere. You know, like for us, we, we do a lot out in the community, and, you know, um, you know we can, we can kind of tune our laptops to use a little bit less battery, but sometimes it's not feasible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that worst feeling is you realize, oh, I'm almost out of battery. I'm in the middle of something important, and I don't have my charger. Yeah, that is a terrifying feeling. Which, I mean, I've seen things, but I don't know. Coming from the coming from okay. Cole. Uh, so, uh, for me, yes, it's in restream. I can click a comment and have it show up in stream underneath you guys. Oh, nifty. Oh, so it's like a so it's like a <laughs> so Cole's playing with restream as we're going through this stuff. And he's like, woo. Because uh -oh. <laughs> well, if you look at Facebook, it's underneath our our, um, our closed captioning too. But that's neat. That's really cool. So we can actually have. Sorry, it like a focus. we're learning a whole new platform. We decided to go without a net 
totally live with a new platform uh, to try to stream tonight uh, because three of us are absolutely crazy at times, <laughs> but in a good way. Yeah, a good sometimes, way. Sometimes. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> crazy. Times. It's crazy. It's crazy in a you know, your mom would approve, your grandma would approve way. <laughs> <laughs> those two are boy scouts i can't say i just i'll leave that there for everybody in the audience yeah. you know um i got one other graphene thing and i'm gonna throw it over okay. to you so again graphene so you remember it's kind of like a lattice it's like a net yeah okay so we're using graphene to filter out from water and other okay. things heavy metals so mercury uranium all of those crazy things that lead yeah. for heaven's sakes lead in in Detroit, you know, all of those crazy things that would, you know, very, very much hurt young children, adults, everyone. Oh, yeah. um, they're using graphene to build filters. And the cool thing about the filter is that, um, you know, these, these kind of like graphene filters and stuff that they can, they can be reused yeah. because the graphene can just be heated up and then made back into graphene. So when it's heated up, the heavy metals go off and form into their own separate thing where they can be then contained. And then the graphene just makes graphene again. Mm -hmm. So it's literally these recyclable filters. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all you do is just basically heat them up, make graphene all over again, and the heavy metals go off to their self. And in some cases, you know, lead is still a very important thing for industry. Uranium is still important. So pulling them out of the water is kind of like mining them. So now we're purifying the water so we don't get sick. And we're mining at the same time. So think yeah. gold rush <laughs> in some respects. Uh, my family lives in a hurricane-prone area on TV as part of the hurricane prep. Make sure you have a plan uh, for working if you work remotely. Is that just batteries? My family asked me. That is absolutely not just batteries because working remotely now requires internet. So at this point, you have to have some sort of either a way to tether um, and use the internet from your phone. Or so some sort of mobile, mobile hotspot, hotspot, like what we loan here yeah, at the library. We here. Um, and we loan them out for you know for people working um, remotely, for students, for people going on vacation. We we loan them out for a lot of reasons. But yeah, having that mobile hotspot, either you know using your 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 phone for a mobile hotspot. Um, in some cases, a lot of people pay for that service as part of their plan, and they yeah. don't even realize they can use that. Yeah. Well, it's like on my phone. It's like you you don't know about it until you. You know, you look at your phone for like a solid like hour or two because you're bored. Like you know, like that, that's that's what <laughs> I'm having one of those day. bored moments. I'm like, just like, I want to see what all the buttons do on my phone. Well, it's like it's like one of those things. Like like I, when I first got it, that was that was the main thing because you uh -huh. know it's 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 a, it's a Google Pixel. It had some interesting like yeah, Google threw some it, weird stuff yeah, on their phone. Was weird stuff with it. We're so in a good way like, though. You know, just like going through it, looking through what I can yeah. actually do with my phone, and like today I had someone come in. They were having issues with their phone not getting phone calls uh, and so i knew google had these things called gestures uh-huh and i know most of the android phones still have it too and they have their own versions of them but i went into their gesture settings and they had the do not disturb when you have your hand over oh the or you have your phone flipped oh my over, gosh i have that turned on myself like the one with it being flipped over because yeah. usually i leave my phone next to my bed yeah. So I'll just flip it over so it doesn't go off in the middle of the night when I'm yeah. trying to sleep. Yeah. I forgot all about those yeah. gestures. So when they and they said, "Oh, well, I had a book over top of it." So like maybe that's that's mainly the reason why maybe it yeah. didn't go off. Could be any number it, of things. It thought that you had your hand on top of it. Yeah. It's just that kind of thing like That's that, spooky. Yeah. But basically along the lines of that, it's like when you're looking around your phone, you find some really cool, interesting stuff. You find some weird stuff. Yeah. And the gestures were one of them. Gestures are but weird. Again, back to the mobile hotspot thing, though. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like you don't know it's there till it's, you find it. Like, yeah. Really. But I mean, literally, it's in some people's service plans, and they're paying for it on mm -hmm. a regular basis to be able to tether to that phone. Um, so yeah, that's it's some crazy, pretty crazy stuff. So. All right. All right, on Twitch, we're still, we're still doing exit, supposedly. Oh, darn it. Twitch, Twitch it's is good. weird. It's, a, it's all good. Twitch we're, is we're, weird. We're, we're, we're doing tech things right now, so we're already halfway through, I think. Okay. So. Actually, Twitch about 15 minutes sometimes. left, Yeah. supposedly. Yeah, about 15 minutes left. So we're all good. All right. What else you got? All right. So LG, phone company, 
Yeah. Right, let's just let's just. Call they used to be called Lucky Gold Star. They're a South well, Korean they, company. That's, that's why they're, they're LG. Yeah, but they yeah. used to be called Lucky Gold. Yeah, Star. they used to make VHS players. Well, it's like it's like because um, I'm old and I get well, to say like stuff how like MSI that. MSI is was uh, micro. Oh, Microservices Incorporated or something? No, it was Microsystem. Micro Incorporated? Micro Star. Oh, Micro Star Incorporated. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, um. But yeah, so LG uh, claims it has made a breakthrough in the folding devices. Like screen wise, okay. So like some of the new Samsung phones that are coming yeah, out that fold, but it but they use glass now. Yeah, yeah. LG, they use a grill of glass. Yeah. LG calls it dumb, kind of. <laughs> Say what? LG kind is using plastic. So you know, like how original the Samsung Z folds and stuff like yeah. that had the plastic screens. Yeah, yeah. And they were easily like you could you you did like one tiny scratch to it, and that was the it end was of it. There forever. Yeah. They claim that they've made it to feel like and use it like glass so it's a plastic that acts more like gorilla glass which yes. gorilla glass i think is turning into a kleenex style term it yeah. used to be a brand but now it kind of explains like everyone's super yeah. tough glass for films yeah, but the the idea is it's supposed to be a film that is able to be bent in every single sort mm -hmm. of way like if i would to turn the camera around it's literally like in an s shape yeah they kind like of feel like really curved it around s shape interesting and they're saying that this is going to be they're, instead of actually going out to manufacturers and buying it from them, LG mm -hmm. just took out the middleman and was like, we're just going to make it ourselves. Yeah. Well, historically, I mean, they've been a company that made a lot of different things. Like I said, they were originally Lucky Gold Star, and I, th I think it was Lucky and Gold Star that merged together and made the company, but don't quote me on that one. Um, they used to make VHS, VHS players, and they made, they made a lot of different kind of electronics. Um, they were, I think it's a South Korean company, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's made out of peat film. Oh, PET film. Yeah, PET film. So PET is a, film, yeah, it's a type it. of plastic. Yeah. Yeah, best known as the plastic in your soda bottle. Yep. But it is if you apply that coating to plastic and then apply that to a cover material uh -huh. to a flexible OLED panel, you have a folding screen that lasts longer and less. Interesting. With a less noticeable crease than today's folding devices. All righty then. So I'm looking through some of my notes because I was going back through um you know some of the stuff we had talked about or i had in my notes for the they made color tvs yes morgan yes gold star. gold star i still think it was lucky and gold star that merged together um so i'm going through some of my um my notes some of the stories we didn't get to talk about yeah and one of the things that... i never got to talk about um was that gm so this goes back to melanie's question gm um as far as all their brands of products um in the next couple of years It'll start out with their flagship brands, so the more expensive, like the Buicks and the yeah. uh, the Cadillacs, so the the higher end, I'll GMC. call them higher end GMC, yeah, higher end cars, stuff. yeah, um, will come with five G standard. The car will have five G. Oh, so okay. um, it's not your phone pairing to the car. The car itself has five G, so it's for enhanced um, mapping. So you take GPS and then you, you merge it with internet so that you have more like Waze or something like that where it has both the, the GPS map and your positioning as well as all of the other data like road hazard construction is coming up. So there's that kind of stuff. But it's also going to be more, you know, it, it, the uh, more recent view, uh, I was talking about it being a hotspot. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's going to be your internet. So, Melanie, as far as like, you know, the, the hurricane prone areas, um, you know, more and more vehicles are coming out where they have built-in generators because during the well, whole thing I, that happened in Texas, yeah. the the people used Ford trucks. Some of the new Ford yeah. trucks had well, generator like built-in. Well, like now when they they're uh, we're talking about the the generator kind of thing, like the the, the Ford Lightning one, uh, the one that I talked about a while yeah, ago. The electric the EV the electric truck, yeah. one. It will it you plug it into the charger, it's uh -huh. supposed to power your house. Yeah, it's supposed I can to be see like that. a full-on generator. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I, 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 you know, I grew up with my dad being a welder, so we had a gas drive welding machine, the kind you see when they're doing big construction. Yeah. Um, so that gas drive welding machine is also a giant uh, generator, and we're talking, you know, like the one thing is, it's probably eight foot long and I think four foot high. I mean, it's giant. Yeah. Um, we can power my parents' house and like half the block with <laughs> that thing. It's just a giant generator. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah, it's kind of cool. So I mean, yeah, so your car is going to become more of your generator. It's going to become your internet. So you won't have to pair your phone with your car. 
your car will, and I think it's kind of cool because I think, you know, I've, I update my car periodically, yeah. the software on my car if it's released. So, um, by the way, you guys know that you can do that. You can update your radio so that the, mm -hmm. the correct albums so it's the same thing with show up. Yeah. Well, I, I go to the, like my, my parents have, you know, a pretty nice Buick at home mm -hmm. and I'm like, do you know if that's been updated lately? And they're like, I don't know. Can you update? I'm yep. like, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I download easy. I download the firmware. Well, I download the firmware, put it on a USB key, and then stick it into the USB port of my car, yeah. and then that's how I update the um, the albums, the album art, and the yeah. album information. But I also, also updated the maps. Yep, I updated the, the maps. maps. Um, I also updated. Um, I updated a couple things with my vehicle itself. Um, some of the things actually with the 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 vehicle itself because um, I had some safety issues. Hmm. With my, I had uh, unfortunately I have the same vehicle. Knock on wood, um, that the um, the gear shift doesn't always go into park. Oh, um, that that they had a big recall on. Um, so um, I did the recall myself. Technically, uh, I'm not saying that's a good idea to do at home, but I didn't realize when I did the firmware, it put something into the software that, that there's still a recall to fix a mechanical thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I got done. Yeah. But it put in the software. It puts a thing that tells you to double. It puts on the screen to double check your your gear shift before getting out of the car. It added that in. So the firmware I did didn't necessarily. I didn't break any laws doing that firmware. Yeah. But it put a screen on that every time I stop the car, it says check your gear shift to make sure it is in park. I say, they added that in. I don't have to worry about that because all my cars that I drive don't have that kind of stuff. Manual. Very manual. I, I have yeah. I have a old Taurus. I don't have to worry about that. I just have a radio that works. Your Taurus, your Taurus will drive until there is nothing left of it. Because they I call those, them the those are awesome. I call them the cockroaches. Because mm -hmm. those little three liter V sixes uh, they'll last forever. They'll last yeah, for there's a, it's like some well, of the old Hondas that'll yeah. you know, two hundred, three hundred well, thousand miles. I have a Honda Accord at home too. Yeah. So conveniently, I have two cockroaches. Those, those things will last forever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hondas are always joked to be the cockroaches of all cars. Yeah. They last forever. They are. I mean, you know, they're an amazing car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so here's a good one for you. Um, I didn't realize they use Morse code to encode some of the stuff when you burn a CD or a Blu ray disc. Some of the information is actually encoded in a form of Morse code so that the some of the tracking information okay. and some of the background data yeah. is recorded basically in Morse code. Because when you burn the CD, yeah. you're burning a dot and a dash, and the Blu-ray just makes it a lot smaller. So much, much finer, yeah. okay? I didn't realize it's basically Morse. It literally is old school we're talking 1900s you know send the did it did it did it you know my grandfather was a radio operator in the in world war ii and that's yeah. what he did um so they're finally in 2021 going to move away from <laughs> morse code encoding cds and blu-rays um so what they're going to do is they're going to use this kind of um color base since blu-rays and and dvds work on color anyway in some respects they're going to colorize and they called it antennas, but it's kind of a weird shape that they're going to burn in. Yeah. And it allows them to quadruple some of the storage capacity. Because part of what it is, is it's not how much data you can store. It's, it's how compact you can get on one of these things. And it allows them to basically quadruple how tightly you can pack some of the data. Oh, okay. It's fascinating. Um, still going to, you know, CDs and DVDs yeah. are not your best storage medium because they, they not, eventually not, degrade. Not anymore, yeah. Yeah. But I'm fascinated by it. Now, if they can come up with a glass medium, because glass lasts a heck of a lot longer than the, the polycarbonate substrate yeah. that we use right now. Yeah, so that's kind of a little bit mind-blowing, yeah, isn't it? I didn't realize it was Morse code. You know, so crazy. You got another story in there? Um, well, I mean, it, about six it's, a, minutes it's, a, left. It's, another, it's another Facebook product, so I know like, we were talking about like, Oculus last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we like to pick on Facebook. So, uh, Facebook. Because come up with fun things. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, we'll pick on Facebook. We like that. So, we like Facebook has come out with another version of uh, smart glasses. Mm -hmm. But this time, they partner with Ray-Ban. Okay, so they're expensive yeah, looking smart exactly. glasses. <laughs> so, basically, from what I read from this article, too, is that they're basically the um, the Bose glasses... And the they're called they they were called they so basically it's you mean it's expanded Bose yeah. glasses to other people expanded too. Bose glasses but they also came there was a company before that made sunglasses that was made for Snapchat and they were called like Snap 
glasses or something. I can't remember exactly what they were. But they came out. They have a camera in them. Uh huh. And you can record stuff from your face. Yeah. So basically, so like if you're wearing your glasses right now, basically just imagine a camera. We could have the, we could have the Sean cam looking yeah, at Charlie. Yeah. And Charlie's screen. Yeah. So oh, basically, that's, funny. That, that's that's what it is. But they've partnered with Ray Ban to make these glasses, yeah. which is kind of cool. But also, I'm like, oh boy, yay! Glasses that record things again. Well, I mean, they've Ooh. been doing that for a while. <laughs> I mean, so I mean. You know when Google Google Glass came out, you know, yeah. and you know, I think we've talked about. It. I got I got to try them out. I was very fortunate. I had a friend who you know was able to 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 get them, so we could try them out. And one of the things was the recording of the person, but it was funny. There was so little storage, you could barely get anything out of it. Yeah, it's probably shorter than a TikTok video at this point. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, um, Snapchat had one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, yeah. Snapchat glasses. had the glasses. That just sounds so it's, weird. It's, it's, a com it's a combination between so weird. the Snapchat glasses and the mm -hmm. Bose headphone glasses. And they just mashed them together and made these Ray-Ban Facebook it's, smart it's Ray glasses. It's Ray-Ban because, you know, it's got to be Ray-Ban. I mean, I am, I'm a child of the 70s and 80s. And, I mean, you know, Ray-Ban was the glasses because, yeah. you know, like Tom Cruise, Top Gun wore, you know, Ray-Bans exactly. and... Yeah. You know, go a little further into the '90s and stuff. You know, David Hassel Hasselhoff uh, wore Ray Bans yeah. on Baywatch. I don't think he wore them on Knight Rider, but like, <laughs> you know, Baywatch. Yeah. You know. So as we're as we're starting to wrap up, we got about four minutes left. Uh, feel free to ask us questions at any time. You know, we talk about the news and then we talk about everything Random else. Things. We, Random we will things. we will trail off on the something completely. We find a tangent different. and we yeah, go on that we tangent. Go. Yeah. We, go. we love those tangents. Um uh, you know it's funny we we I don't know if most people know that these things uh these uh, uh talking texts turn into podcasts <laughs> and uh we have listeners all over the all over the globe and sometimes I wonder <laughs> what they what think they of think, us. Yeah. Yeah, because I was looking. So we have a couple of different podcasts here for for the library, and one of them is our theater of the mind, where we do um, yeah the readings. And we do we do we did Macbeth. Yeah. We've done poems. We've done um, we we've done. We're we're currently, by the way, we're doing on our podcast. We're doing uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Some of the stuff we did last year, where we're rehashing. Uh, we're going to do some other kind of readings of some some scarier stories. We've did right. uh, Sleepy Hollow. So that's actually what's playing on our podcast on that, on the Theater of the Mind podcast. So search any place you do podcasts or any place you listen to music, whether it's Apple, Amazon. Uh, so we're on uh, we're on Audible. We're on uh, iTunes. Say, we're yeah. on Apple Music or uh, Amazon Music. We're on Google Music. Spotify. Spotify and Pandora. Oh, okay. Um, so we're on all of those platforms. So if you search um, like MPL's Theater of the Mind or MPL's Talking Tech, you'll find us. Uh, but it is fascinating because I look at it tells me what countries yeah and then like you know I mean why is people from Switzerland watching talking text <laughs> <laughs> what are they getting from us it must be entertaining so because is there, is there any other library things that we want to um, promote, promote? Um, so let's see we've got I mean we have so many events you got to go to our calendar so if you go to uh, www.madison-library.info slash events takes you right to our calendar It'll show you where Gus the Book Bus, our bookmobile, is at. Um, I know this weekend we're going to be at Rainbow Farms for um, tomatoes. So you pick tomatoes. Yeah. So we're going to be doing oh, a story, yeah, story time right there. Effect. And then you can also yes. come. So it's a you pick story time. Uh, we do a lot of pop-ups with uh, Gus, but we're also a lot of places with Gus around the community. Um, Charlie, you have yeah. a Twitch uh, a new stream thing, coming up. Which I know we've been doing the Twitch play games kind of thing. Yeah. But... I'm gonna take it upon myself. Dun, to, dun, dun. Um, well, it's, it's I don't know. It's because it's a little hard to choose games, especially with the Adrians that I'm working with. But I will be taking an hour out of my time to play video games in front of you on screen. <laughs> and that's the funny thing is that's where Twitch was born. Yeah. Um. So Twitch started out as a gaming platform. We're actually we're on Twitch here, but um, you can watch people play chess on Twitch and mm -hmm. learn about chess. You can. Uh, one of my favorites, in all honesty, on Twitch, is. I watch someone uh, throw pottery. Mm -hmm. So not throw like you know, on the screen. That's, yeah. that's what they call it when they the they, 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 make, they yeah, throw they the, the it, clay yeah. and they make yeah. it. Um, it is it's it's Bob Ross level piece. 
you watch this person, they talk about why they're well, using their thumb should, this way or this tool you, or whatever. I should tell you then, Bob Ross has a Twitch channel. Yes, Bob Ross has a Twitch channel and too. they have marathons of all the episodes mm -hmm. almost every day. Yeah. And I love it because then it just it's my way of getting away from I know you are you all. are probably one of the biggest fans of Bob Ross. I mean I, I know I took out I took out the kid book yeah. that came back. And I still have it, and I need to return it. <laughs> well, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to be a good, got to yeah. be a good gotta, steward of our library materials. Got to be a good staff. Got to yeah. be a good staff person, and actually return books on time. Yes, yes, we must do that. It yes. is now eight o'clock. It is eight o'clock, so we're wrapping up. So what happens is, um, what will happen now is that we've we wrapped up, and then this will actually be recorded and available on uh, on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook later, you can watch us. And you can always comment again, and we'll see the comments come through, and we can, because we've answered questions after, yeah. you know, the, the session. So um, we'll do this again next month, where the second Thursday. Second Thursday. Second All Thursday right. of the month, we'll be back. And uh, feel free to ask us questions. I know we've gotten some questions tonight. Um, and we try to kind of fill mm -hmm. the time by talking about different, uh, different things that find, that, we find fascinating in technology yeah. and uh, our producer Colt gets to chime in periodically and keep us, keep us like on this. task a little bit there. So uh, <laughs> thank you all and uh, have a wonderful evening and uh, I wish you well and uh, stay safe out there. Okay. See you all next yeah. month. All right. So go ahead and cut.